about these companies outside of these walls. <laughs> okay, <laughs> the I'm experts. so glad you, can I just say I'm so glad you said that. We're like, because who, what? I'm like, okay, this is a $34 billion deal. And yes, there have been mumblings about this over the past week or so. Yeah. And I was like, I should know about these companies. This is a big deal. Synopsis was up 61% last year, by the way. That's right. It's a good gainer. I mean, there's, there's good reason, right? So Synopsis owns this very specialized part of the chip supply chain, which, it, as you know, is critical to the world. Chips are in everything. They're in televisions. They're in refrigerators. They're in cars. They're in, like, AI, compute, you know. Um, and Synopsis doesn't make the chips. Synopsis doesn't even make, make the chip machines that make the chips. Synopsis makes the software that flows into the machines that then makes the chips. And there are very few companies that are in that space. So they already have a really good market share in there. And this investment, this $34 billion deal, what that does is it increases their stack so to speak, in the technology world. So they're not just designing the software that makes the chips, but they're able to now integrate this company, Ansys, that builds models that allows manufacturers of everything from cars to like aircrafts, defense devices and, and military um, equipment to model how that equipment is going to be used in the real world. So imagine taking this like chip design company and merging it with this modeling software mm -hmm. and you have like a very powerful combination that can go after kind even of, bigger market Kind of share. a one-stop shopping, it feels like. That's right. Companies. Yeah. You, you need your chips, Carol. You know where to go, right? Yeah, we That's, do. You do all your chip <laughs> shopping there. Yeah, last time I went chip shopping. But it's really, it's wild. You know, it's funny. I love the supply chain analysis function on the Bloomberg. And Ansys, I mean, customers are Caterpillar, Boeing, Roll Rolls Royce, Lenovo, um, Huawei, the military, like yeah. all of them, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm looking at um, Synopsys, and I'm looking at a lot of companies that I don't actually know. Oh well, you just you just mentioned AMD, oh, AMD, right? Arm. All the major That's all the true. major chip manufacturers of the world are going to use a company Intel? like Synops Intel. That's right. And Ansys is I'm actually going down a the customer. list now. I see them. Ansys okay. is a customer. They have a years long relationship with each other. What they would say, and I think they said it during their call earlier this morning when they announced the deal, is that this is like years in the making. Like they have been using each other's technology for quite some time. Um, regulatory problems, regulatory issues. Right. Because so it was we interesting. Synopsis yeah. rallied, which yeah. was the acquirer, which is not what you typically see. And then Ansys as the target went down. Both moves are counterintuitive. Yeah. To some extent, exactly what you mentioned, which is the fact that like the, the price it's going for is less than what the market had expected. There were some reports, not from us, there were some reports out there about the fact that Ansys could end up going for like $400 per share and it ended up going below that. So that's one reason, but another reason is exactly what you said. Stock closed at the 327 and change today. That's, that's right. a big bump, yeah. okay. So um, another reason, of course, is the regulatory concern over having these two companies merge together. That's a per pretty powerful market force and whether it gets past the CFTC and other regulatory agencies, we don't know. And then there's the ge the geopolitical pressure of China, right? Oh. Will China, a big consumer who has a say in these kinds of mergers, even if they're two American companies, sign off on a deal like this that would create a powerful company within here, you know, within these bounds? That's surprising to me. Yeah, Why yeah. would China have a say here? <laughs> It's super surprising. I didn't learn this until like another deal that involved two other technology companies ended up getting, ended up falling apart earlier this year. China is a major consumer of all things around the world because it has huge buying power. It actually has say and influence and approval processes in place for mergers of companies wow. that serve the country. That's interesting. Even if they're outside of the country. So I did yeah. the FAGO uh, function on the Bloomberg terminal, yeah. literally FAGO. And what you can do is you can pull up uh, the financial analysis by geography and you can see that, in fact, uh, for Synopsys at least, 15.2% of the company's revenue in 2023, the fiscal year ended uh, in October, uh, came from China. That's exactly right. And actually, in an interview with Bloomberg Television not too long ago, Synopsis even said that the then outgoing CEO of Synopsis said we would be selling even more to China. China would represent an even larger share of our market if it weren't for the restrictions that the U.S. has placed on exports of chip technology and chips themselves to that country. And it doesn't look like um, Ansys gets a significant portion of revenue from uh, from China at this point. It's not. But even it will. Considered. Yeah. Right. Yeah, 
good so point. So once it's a part of the company, exactly. I mean, for Synopsys, it opens up a ton of different markets for them, right, that they haven't already played in. So I don't know, net net, how are you thinking about this? Is this likely to happen or we're going to have to be patient or or I don't know? How do you think about it as an analyst? I know you can't say yes or no in terms of it's going to happen, but... Um, so hard know. to call whether it's actually going to happen, but I'll point you to two things. One, there was a very large merger uh, in aviation today that faced some antitrust uh, pushback. Jeff Lewis Lewis a few Spirit. hours ago. Jeff Lewis Lewis about. Um, acquisition right, of Spirit, right. Yeah. Um, but on top of that, uh, I will also point you to because the it was anti they were concerned about anti competitive. Would this be anti competitive? That's the question, okay. right? And and they raised that as like a potential concern as part of their conversation today with investors. But the other thing I'll point you to is the estimated closure closing date of this deal is the first half of 2025 in in the in the market's mind that just points to the you, fact that they are anticipating a potential fight. you never want a deal to take a year to close i mean even from a, from selling a condo you well, know somewhere in the in the u.s a realtor is going to say to you let's get this thing closed as soon as possible because this the longer we wait the more this deal can fall I'm apart raising my hand yeah we do have a election here in November. Are you raising your hand because you want to talk, Carol? Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Is it the expectation that about we'll, that election. we'll get yeah. through an election, we'll have a new administration? Is that part of it? That's an interesting strategy. I hadn't even thought about it. Will we be ushering in a different CFTC that is more like merger friendly? I don't know. It's not like the Trump administration was. Both of them have right? been pushing <laughs> exactly. in terms of China, but you never so, know, right? Yeah, that's a dangerous game to play if that's the reason why they're scheduling the closing for first half of 2025. I don't know.